let's look at an application of fractions. Let's think about this problem. Three out of ten campers forgot to bring toothbrushes to camp. What fraction of the campers forgot their toothbrushes? So what fraction of the campers forgot to bring their toothbrushes? Well, three of them forgot, so three out of a total of ten. Ten represents the whole number of campers, and three of the ten forgot to bring their toothbrushes. So it's three tenths. Now let's answer another question. What fraction brought their toothbrushes? Well, if three out of the ten forgot their toothbrushes, then everybody else brought them. So if there were only ten campers and three of them forgot them, that leaves seven of them that had to bring them. Seven out of the ten brought their toothbrushes. Since we've talked about writing different things, I have five practice problems that I want you to do to see if you understand the different things that we've talked about. Let's move this so you can see all five of them. The first one says to draw a picture of the fraction five halves. The second one ask you to write a fraction to represent the shaded portion of the picture here. And then go back and write a fraction to represent the non-shaded portion. The third practice problem asks you to change 9 and 3 fifths to an improper fraction. Number 4 change 15 eighths to a mixed number. Number 5, 19 out of 21 people are present. What fraction represents the number of people that are absent? When you finish copying these problems down, cut the tape off to work them. Once you get them worked, cut the tape back on to check your answers. Here are the answers to the practice problems. The first one is the picture. Number two, part A, is two sevenths. Part B is 5 sevenths. Number 3, 48 fifths. Number 4, 1 and 7 eighths. And number 5, 2, 21 Now that we know what fractions are and that we can represent them pictorially, we want to talk about what we mean by equivalent fractions. 
when are two fractions equivalent? Or when do two fractions equal each other? Equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same quantity. Okay, I've drawn here a picture to represent three separate fractions. First we have the fraction one half, so one out of the two pieces is shaded. Here we have the fraction two fourths, in which two out of four pieces are shaded. And last we have the fraction three six, in which three out of six pieces are shaded. If you'll look closely, you'll see that the same amount of the circle is shaded each time. So one half, two fourths, and three six all represent the same fraction. So they can all be said to be equal to each other, or they are equivalent fractions. One half equals two fourths equals three six. They're just different ways of representing the fraction one half. To start with a fraction and come up with another fraction that's equivalent to it, what we can do is take the numerator and the denominator and multiply them both by the same number. So we take, in this case, I use the number C. If you take A and multiply it by C, and B and multiply it by that same C, you come up with a new fraction that's equivalent to your first fraction. Now that's as long as your C is not zero. You can't multiply each piece by zero because you'll come up with something over zero and you can't have a fraction over zero. But as long as the thing that you multiply each part of your fraction by is not zero, you can get an equivalent fraction. This is actually a theorem that I have written down. It's called the Fundamental Theorem of Fractions. Let me show you how you could do that with the one half we were just working on. If you take the one half and multiply each part of that fraction by three, if you take one and multiply it by three, and two and multiply it by three, you come up with a new fraction, three six. And that new fraction, 3 6, means the same thing as the old fraction, 1 half. And we saw that in the picture a minute ago. 1 half and 3 6 both represented 1 half of our circle. So we can state what I've told you. If the numerator and denominator of a fraction are each multiplied by the same non zero number, an equivalent fraction is obtained. So if you multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same non-zero number, you'll get a new fraction with a new denominator and a new numerator, but that new fraction will mean the very same thing as your original fraction. What we're doing here is we're building up our fractions, making them have a bigger denominator and a bigger numerator but we're still coming up with something that's equivalent to what we had to start with. 